Let's thread. Actually, I'm going to need, will you go get me a, your grooving tool holder? And I'll grab the inserts. They should be up here. The threading inserts and the grooving inserts should be right here. So just grab one each. The grooving insert is going to be this little one right here with the full radius on it. And Alan asked me to show the barrel because I think I promised him that the other day, but I'm just going to, while we're thinking about it, go through these. Now this should be set at 30 degrees right here. And it's going to be 30 degrees from straight towards the tail stuck in. So don't just go with 30 degrees on this micro or on this protractor base. Okay. Trust it. Well, no, some of them are set up different than this one. This is a right here, it's at zero. And some of them are zero right over here. I think that one is at zero right there. Well, don't you use a big wrench on this, a, just a little tiny wrench is better. There should be some smaller wrenches in the tool room, but we'll loosen both of these. The one on the end down there actually has another one that you have to back this up, and it's got a third one inside. Oh. But we're going to thread mostly on this one and this one. Okay. okay. Because they cut thread so much nicer in there. Just better. Okay, so the first thing I need to do with this tool is get it on center, and then we're going to put our thread relief in right here. Okay. Um, you don't center the threading tool this way because you'll break the tip of the threading tool off just by that much pressure, just by getting enough pressure on it to hold the steel rule. This one looks like Conley already used it because it's on center already. So we're just going to go with it for the threading and for the thread relief. I'm going to cut the end of this part off. Get a turning tool. Is it on center for this one? Why'd you give me this one, Jacob? And it's just one I grabbed. No, I'm just kidding. That's not on center. Alan says we're not on center. Are we too high, huh? I think so. Still must be too high because it is too high. So when you're centering a tool, you can do it fairly quickly. You can just lower it enough that you can see the tool go under. And then just raise it up a little bit at a time until that little nub is gone. And as soon as that nub is gone, then you're on center. Okay? Alright, so that's on center right there. I don't want this thread. So. Saving us all day already just by having those tools over there. Okay, and this one I'm just going to get it a little bit below center. Put the thread relief on. That thread relief should be again just a little bit less than the threads. So I just took the rest of the thread that was on the off. And you would actually go in with this thread or this chamfer tool, go in and touch your square corner and calculate. So you go into the square corner and touch with it, set it at zero. It's 250 thousandths, right? Because it's a quarter inch bar stop. Mm -hmm. And you want it to be 190 from the UNR minor diameter that was in the machinery's handbook. Is this the mouth in you? No. Yeah, I'm listening to the mouth in you. It's a quarter inch. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta remember what that is. Fine, I'll be right back. That's more like the elevation screw. Where'd you get that? It was in the pile over there. I was watching. Yeah, it's not that one. Okay, so when you touch off, you'll touch on the corner. You'll take 250 minus 190, which is 60 thousandths. Set this at zero and go into 60. And that will give you your 190 diameter. We're going to do that exact same thing all over again with this. Normally on a tool where you're going to put a groove in, 
you would actually look at your drawing and see what side of the tool the dimension comes from. On this tool, we're actually going to be grooving to this side because we're a quarter of an inch from here back for the length of our thread. I don't know if that matters. It makes sense. So you can go up and barely touch. So you can actually see this is a little bit low, and I guess since I'm already facing the end of it off, I might as well just raise it up here because it's on center. And this will be centered for the threading tool also. Because the threading tool and this grooving insert are both made the same size, so they'll fit in this tool holder the same way. Just do that chamfer over again. So I'm going to set this at zero when I touch. And just to make it faster, I'm not uh, using a steel wool to center that like I'd expect you to. But I just set this at zero and I'm going to go into 60 pounds. Okay, which gives me a nice clean 190 diameter down there. Come back here and we'll touch it off again. If you've already faced your part off, you may not want to do that. I just cut it off a little bit shorter, right? Probably about a thousand or so. Then I just asked Conley to go grab a to go grab an indicator, mm -hmm. and we'll use the indicator to make all of our movements with because we don't have a digital readout on any of these. So I'm going to set it at zero right here. Try and get it as straight as like an eyeball. It. Straight, Tom. And it just has a yeah. And I'm going to go 100, 200, 250, and you use 250 if your axle is the right length when you face it off on both sides. If it's not, then you'll have to take the length that it's supposed to be minus the length that it is and make that 1 inch 532 in between the two threads the right size. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we cut again. How am I going to get this thread to the end of the 199? That was a lot of cut. I'm going to actually sell those 5,000 too far in already. I'm just going like 60,000, maybe 62. And right there is the thread relief. We've got a root angle, we've got a thread relief. Now as we need a thread. I would actually do this on both sides of all the uh, both axles. So you actually do this on all four of them, all four ends, oh, you before you ends. start threading. Yeah, because once you set up the thread, you're going to want to let, leave it thin up and just cut all the threads so you get this depth right and everything is right. So. Over here we've got our um, thread wires. They'll just be right there by my door. Um, and this is where that, this is the card that we actually looked at. Here's the chart that I had up there. Um, so if you don't remember, it's right there. It shows you how to measure the threads also on it. Um, and we're going to look for number 29 wires when we get them cutting. And they should be listed right here, um, the size. It'll be these little tiny guys right there. If you happen to drop one, get everybody in the class to help you find it. Okay? We've lost tons of these. They're not super expensive. It's just annoying to have to buy one when 
for like a few minutes you could stop and find them really easy. Okay. So some of the other tools that we needed. I don't know. Okay. There's a metric. Do they fit? Yeah. Put that one in the metric. Okay. It All right, so we're just going to change inserts, put this threading one on, check, make sure it's not chipped. Does it matter which side? Is it? Shouldn't. This one's got some aluminum on it. It looks like it might be chipped, but it's just got aluminum stuck on it. So I'm just going to use the side that's been used. Just put it on there. It's still on centered because we centered the, basically we centered the tool holder and not just the tool this time. So where's this one going to be? 10 o'clock. And where's this dial going to be set? Zero. Zero. So you do that all before you touch anything. And you're going to turn the spindle on. You move this back. You come up here. Barely try and touch this. And then I'm going to set this one at zero also. Now this is the compound rest. Do you remember talking about a compound rest depth in class? No. No. What is the compound rest depth? Compound rest depth was compound rest depth is 0.75 times pitch. Five, yeah, so again, so 0.75 times pitch. Okay, so that's from zero. Really, when we get in here to 37 thousandths, 37 and a half, we should be done. Okay, but we're going to start measuring it way before that. I can't remember what zero is. Come way back here and go back to zero, and that should be the first just touching. So, this is not turning right here because we haven't set this up over here for the threads. And if you look right here on this chart, this dirty one, <laughs> we're going to find 20 threads print, which is right here. So, I'm going to pull this out, move it over. Put it in that notch, and they all are different. You just kind of have to look and see what you need. How do you do. tell which is lining up with what? What? Wow. Move here a little closer. I see. There's a slot on this particular one for every one of these columns. Okay. So you just pull that out, lift it up, lock it in, go back in the classroom until you're safe. Alright. You didn't say we needed to talk about safety, Alan. We did? Oh, okay. We good now? All right. And then what do we have to do? So we got the column lined up. Now we need to get the rows lined up. So this needs to be an A and an F. F is up here. It has to run. It has to be an F anytime it's over 300 RPM. So 99% of the time, we're going to be an F over here anyway. I'm going to take this off because it's going to help now. And this needs to go over into A. So now I'm an A, F, and 20, and then this right here has to go back and engage the half knot. So that's actually the lead thread. So this is now turning at 30 threads per inch compared to... No, this is turning four, four threads per inch. Right. But it's geared now. It's so geared that such that we're going to be moving. So we'll go 50 thousandths every revolution. And you can stop this and start it almost anywhere that you want. This right here is called the thread chasing dial. On these old, old machines like this one is, in fact, like most of them are, the only safe way to cut a thread right is to engage on the same spot all the way around here. So it's a little slower. You can go 180. See, I've got this marked at two and four. So you can go to 180. But if you look right down through there, you can see that there's just a clamp that has this thread in it that's split in two. It's called a half nut. And you just lock it down by pushing this down. And when the threads line up with the threads on this, this will drop in. It'll actually go on every line and every half line. So right here it'll go in. Right here it'll go in. Right here it'll go in right there. And you want to make sure that, you, that so that you don't cut right in the middle of your thread, you start 
either on two or four, or even better, start on the same one every time. Okay? So if you have a really critical thread that you have to cut, just go with the same number every single time. All right, we're going to go two and four because they're already marked. And I'm just feeling lucky, I guess. I can't see, but I'm going to have to take those off. All right. So to get it back here so we can engage it two and four, you can back it clear up. But you get up here and you have to wait for the number. So what I like to do is I just like to move it back. I'd rather wait with it engaged. Sit here and get my fighting stance on, I guess. So disengage and pull back at the same time. Basically, just disengage it stops it. But the problem with disengaging it is that maybe, let's say, it's not picking up in exactly the same spot that you look you did the last cut in, then it's actually better to disengage it and pull it out at the same time. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So we're going right down the same spot. You're right there in our thread relief. Disengage it, back it up, bring it back to zero. Move in 5,000 or so. What does it say? It says on your handout, first cut you can go in 15,000. This one's only 12 right here. So the very first cut, you can take a pretty heavy cut. After that, it starts getting up here too deep into the threading tool. And you want to go five thousandths at a time after the first cut. Until you get down to about thirty thousandths and one thousandth at a time. And then like a half a thousandth at a time until you're done. So it's slowly moving itself closer, right? It will be. Right now it's not going anywhere. So if you engage the half nut lever, clamp the half nut, make sure you're on your number, your fade right number between one and four. And wait to uh, 3.145297. Would you Please think the answer to that one would be and, one? Uh, possibly? Yeah. Okay, I'm tired of this. I'm going to stop this for a second and show you something else. If you want to change the spindle speed and and you're threading and you want to go faster, let's say, because this is taking a long time. For me, I could actually thread it a little faster. I don't want you to. But um, maybe, I don't know. But let's say you want to change it. If you don't have this half nut engaged and you change the spindle speed, it's not going to line up on your threads anymore. So then you're going to have to jockey all of these around until you've got the tip of the tool right in the thread. Um, so don't disengage this this or anything that runs this thing you can disengage this and that's about it um, while you're cutting your threads now I'm going to leave this engaged and I'm going to change spindle speed just so we can get done a little quicker maybe I'm not I didn't change I didn't change that again for me I'm going to go up here to 179 there we go so that's change in gears. But now I've got to be ready to disengage this because it's still cutting, right? It'll line up on the threads. Okay. But the only reason it did is because I had disengaged when I changed this really at all. So when you disengage, you disengage and you pull out. I do, yeah. And it's just because I've done these really And see now it's it's still going fifty thousandths per revolution. But we're doing a lot more revolutions. And it's still not fast enough for what the actual RPM should be for threading. Okay, I'm just going to back up here to the two, engage it. See, if you back up, you can engage, and then you just wait for it to go, but you can get ready. And always keep a hand on, on this half nut engagement lever and this one. The biggest problem that we have is people turn this the wrong direction. Yeah. You go in and bust your part off. Yeah. So it's better to have it here because the natural tendency is to go, or at least if you practice, it's to go down. Even though some people try and lift it up, you should run it in. And if it's straight up and down, you can't get it to go either direction. If it's over on this side, you have to lift it up and pull it around. So just right here, down, and it's out. So you may want to practice it a few hundred times. And then if you don't go right to zero on this, you go a little bit past, 
it's going to cut a huge amount off and you're going to say, they cut it too deep and I don't know why. And that's usually what it is. You go past, you notice I went clear like this about three times and came back to zero. Because I passed zero each one of those times. And I wanted to make sure that the tool was actually going that way when I was on zero. Okay, we're going another five on the 25,000 deep right now. How deep am I going to be when I start measuring? Why? About that much. Yeah, it's pretty close to being finished, and I want to have some material left um, and not cut too much off before I start measuring. Most parts are scrap because you're roughing too too much. Move it on. Okay, so here's 30 right here. I'm going to change my cut down. Well, 37 and a half it should be finished, right? So I'm going to go back here now. I'm going to move this back to zero so that it is in the last position that I cut on. And I'm just going to try with this wheel and see what it If the wheel will screw on, I'm going to measure it with the thread wires if it won't. Because this thread could have been cut too big on the wheel with the tap and, it fa and in fact it probably was. That's still snug right there. It's pretty tight. That is one wobbly wheel. Somebody drilled. Somebody either drilled with their center drill off center or just kept drilling without center drilling it. All right, let's measure with thread wires. I'll be in my car. Okay, the best thing with these three wires is you don't have six hands, most of them. But it's better to get somebody to help you measure them. It's 24, it's 29. I just dropped that. I don't know if this will have anybody stopping at the old for Yeah, if you don't find it right off. Justin's got her under control, thank you. Would a flashlight help you find them too? Huh? Would a flashlight help you find them too? Yeah, if you don't see them right off, they get hard to find, especially if they fall down in here and there's oh, a bunch yeah. of steel chips and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to have Jake hold these for me. Hold two on one side and one on the other. And it's usually easier to just kind of hold them with two, two hands. Okay, so once you've got them so that there's two on one side, one on the other, and you can take this, and the easiest way is to just kind of slide it down the wire, and then once you feel a little pressure, go ahead and you let go. And have your helper let go. Okay, grab them again, please. And then we'll measure that, and it looks like we're at 275 plus 19. Is that what it is? Yeah. So it's 275 plus 19. Um, plus I need it's 294. Oh, I like to. That looked like 75, but it's actually 75 right there. So 19 is actually 6 less than 75. So it's 50 plus 19 instead. 69. 69, that's why the wheel would screw on. At 79, it wouldn't have screwed on at all. It's 69, it's a little bit bigger than our thread's supposed to be because we've got, what's our tolerance on the measurement over the wire? Did anybody write that down? It's in the board, and they're on the board, right? 261 to 258. Okay. So. So I'm just going to go in a thousandth at a time, 
point for a thousand third time? And yeah, and then we'll probably not use that wheel. I'm gonna go see if I can find another one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if this let's see if this wheel's a little tighter. Hopefully it won't even screw on. Okay, that one's a lot better wheel. It doesn't screw on at all. And it shouldn't at 269 because we're still eight thousandths big, right? All right, so which one am I going to turn? This one's at zero. This one's where it was when we cut it last. Okay, I'm going to go two thousandths instead of just one on this one. Or instead of five, because we're still quite a bit bigger. Okay, so that should get us to about 267, right? Let's do that 265. So it still shouldn't go on because we still be should be about 265. But let's just check it. Okay, so we're still pretty close. Let's measure it one more time. So how many of those wires measure? All three. First one set. Okay. So two on top, one on the bottom, or vice versa. Two on the bottom, one on the top. Okay, so we're at 264, and we need to be...